I'm Clint, and let's have a crash course look at the blending modes in Photoshop as it pertains to us, the digital artists and illustrators. Okay, so the first thing that we can do is actually toss out a lot of these blending modes because you just don't really use them in standard digital painting practices. They're probably in there for photo editing and that sort of thing, but we don't really use them. The only ones we really use are these. Now, I'm sure there are exceptions out there, but these are the ones that I use. And these are the ones that we're going to be looking at. Adobe has already divided these up into sections. You can see the bars there that separate the different sections. Those are there for a reason, because each one of these fits a different kind of bracket of what it does as a blending mode. This blending mode itself refers to how it blends, how it affects and works with the other layers. The ones here in the top will give you whatever you paint. It's not going to change it. It's not going to change the blending. It has essentially no blending variance to it. The next up, anything in this section is always going to darken. Whatever you paint on it will darken the things underneath it. The next section will always brighten. The next section is a mix. It can brighten, it can darken, or it can change the saturation depending on the colors involved. Uh, this section is an odds and ends, and honestly, I don't use any of these, and I don't know of anybody that uses any of these during digital painting, so we're not even going to bother. Last up is the value in hue changing blending modes. Out of those, color is the only one that I would use in any kind of consistent capacity, so that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to go through each one of these, and let's take a moment to look at what it does and how it affects you know, the image over here and then maybe what you would use that blending mode for. First up is normal. Probably don't have to explain this, but if you're new to Photoshop, normal is just your whatever you paint is what you get. If I get this color right here and sample it and I paint it, that's what I get. You can just use this to do an entire digital painting. You don't necessarily need any of the others. Darken and multiply, here are going to be your biggest ones in the darken bracket. Now darken is only going to darken anything that is lighter than itself to its own value. So darken and multiply, a lot of people probably get those a little different, but let's get the same color. Let's get perhaps uh, this reddish tone, and then I'm going to paint across here with it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on a multiply layer right next to it. And we see something really interesting going on. The darken will only darken things lighter than it down to its value. But anything darker than it remains unchanged. So it has a max, right? The multiply will always add the darkness of what color you're painting with to the things underneath it. It has no max. It's just going to multiply them together, or it's going to add them together. These can be really great for adding shadows, right? You can paint something in whatever its base color is, and then go in with a multiply in order to add a shadow that will darken everything consistently. Next section, brighten. Now, lighten and darken are the opposites, but they behave the same way. So that lighten can only lighten something up to its own value. Let's grab this sort of golden tone somewhere around there, and we'll paint that across here. Now you notice that it's doing the same thing as dark, and, but with the lighter values. It will lighten anything darker than itself up to that value, but anything lighter than itself remains unchanged. So all of the values here of the red have been brought up to the value of the paint that I'm painting at, but the brighter spot there on the moon remains unchanged because it is lighter in value than the color I'm painting it with. Now screen is the corresponding one to multiply. Multiply adds the darknesses together. Screen adds the brightness together. I can get my same tone painted across this, and you notice how it brings everything up in value at the same range, uh, at the same proportion as the color that I'm painting it with. In the past, screen was probably one of the better options for uh, painting in a light effect, 
but nowadays linear dodge is better. We'll take a look at that. Now, lighten is still useful. Now, why would you use this? Uh, I consistently use this for atmospherics, but you want to lower the opacity a little bit. So I'm going to get that lighten layer, and I'm going to set that down to about 65% just to pick something. Now, say I wanted to add some sort of fog down here on the bottom of the image. And you notice here that this helps give a, a faded atmospheric effect to it. Now, because it is only at 65%, it's not bringing all of the stuff up to the level. If I had it 100%, we'd lose all information down there. That's not attractive and it's not realistic. So if it is lowered down, then it still brings it up to that level while maintaining some of the detail. So think about this if you're adding in fog uh, or if there is some smoke effect going on in your painting, you're looking at a lightened layer at a lower opacity. Screen if you want to give uh, a more realistic, brighter light. With linear dodge, this is sort of an improvement that they came up with over the screen. And linear dodge is the most believable way to add a light effect because it will brighten the layer, raise the value, and also make adjustment slightly to the saturation and to the hue. Uh, there is this cool uh, side light going on there, so I'm going to pick a bluish tone, and I can come in here and add more of that light over here. Uh, see how very nice that is? It brings in a nice bit of color to it, and it gives this sort of believable cool light effect across the scene. I guess the original was actually a little more to the blue side, not cyan. There you go. Uh, this is generally what I would use this layer for, using light effects and mimicking a believable way that light falls across something. Now note here that with a linear dodge, you generally want to pick a darker color on your swatches or whatever way that you're picking your color. If you pick something high, it's not going to carry very much color with it. So you actually want to pick something a bit lower and you see more color come through. So it's going to be adding some of that color to it as it's raising the value and adjusting the saturation at the same time. Okay, next section we give is the mix. Brighten, darken, and saturation. Overlay is a standard way in order to add color into a black and white scene. And say that I wanted to paint in this moon. I could pick me a golden color. And come in here. This is a nice way to do that. Uh, you can either use a color layer or an overlay layer in order to add color to a black and white if you're working with that technique. Now, overlay can go lighter or darker uh, or adjust saturation. It gets a little finicky. It's sort of like if the color is lighter than the thing behind it, then it will add the lights together. If the color is darker than the thing behind it, it will add the darks together. So it can behave more like a lighten, or it can behave more like a darken, depending on the value of the color that you're painting with. And then it also adds the saturation together. So I could pick something lighter, such as this, and go over it. Now that's lighter than either one of those, so it brightens both of them. But if I pick something darker and go over both of them, you notice that it darkens both of them. So it can flip-flop depending on the value. But you do see that it constantly adds the saturation together and makes it more saturated. Soft light is similar to a degree, but it is a much more muted effect. So I can use the same color, and you just notice the difference there, that it's not nearly as saturated. It's less saturation added, and it behaves a bit more like a screen that is at a lower opacity. Now, hard light is essentially the same thing, but at a much higher rate. So this is the soft light right there. Hard light is over here. Now, hard light and overlay can be used to do very similar things, but hard light can make the thing that you're painting more opaque towards the color that you're painting. Here on the overlay, 
you can see a lot of that scene coming through on the background. But with the hard light, you see that it actually ends up being more opaque towards the color, and you lose a lot of the details there that the, uh, that the background had before I painted it in. Hard light can be a really great way also to add a light source into a scene if that light source is really saturated to a particular color. Uh, for instance, if you're going to be painting something that was under a, a really, really blue light. Well, let's pick a blue tone here. Now, I can add an extreme blue light to it, and it can give me some good effects. That is going to brighten it up, and it's going to make it really saturated towards the color of my light. Now, overlay can get similar. Let's turn that off and do the same thing with overlay but you see that it doesn't carry nearly as much saturation. So if you want more saturation with your light because it's a super tinted light, then what you want to reach for is your hard light layer. Essentially, you can do the same thing with soft light, but it's going to be at a lower degree. So let's actually put the hard light at about 50%, and you can see that. And then I can go to the soft light and turn it on and do the same thing. That's essentially the same thing. Soft light is essentially hard light at about 50% uh, opacity. There you go. Those are some great options for adjusting light if you want to go from black and white to color with your overlay, or if you want to add a really saturated light with your hard light layer. But there is a difference between the linear dodge and the hard light as far as the value of the color that you want to work with. With the hard light, you want to pick a value that is really high. Uh, let me turn the saturation of that back up. So here, I wanna pick a really bright blue in order to add that light in. I wanna pick a darker blue for the linear dodge. And they're gonna get me to about the same level. So just watch uh, which value of color you're using for which one. The last one we wanna look at is color. Well, this one's pretty self-explanatory. It is just going to change the color, that is the hue, but it's not going to change the value, that is the light or darkness of the thing. Come down here and turn that layer on. If I want to make this moon blue, I can just paint it over. You see that the value does not change, only the color. Uh, this is a great way to just do simple changes, like if I wanted to make you know, the belt here across him to be a different color, and say I just want those to be green instead, you can just paint that over, you don't lose any of the detail, and you don't have to worry about any value adjustments. It's just going to change the color of the thing. And there you go. That would be my rundown of the most useful blending modes in Photoshop. Of course, all of these blending modes are also applicable here on your painting brush. You can set your brush itself to any one of these, and you can do the same thing in your layers menu. I hope you have found this helpful. There was a bunch of other art videos and instruction available on the channel. If you haven't checked out my popular videos, go take a look at those. We talk about some things that people find really, really helpful, particularly understanding 2D to 3D uh, changes in the way that you approach mentally your artwork. We talk about references, and if you're new at art, Go check out the Art Fundamentals series where we go over the fundamental things that you really need to know if you're going to be getting into art because these things apply to any kind of stuff that you do. All right, well, thank you for taking the time. Until I see you next time, keep drawing.